Nowadays, you can't even buy a TPI cylinder, but you can buy a cylinder off a non-TPI bike. The only difference is they don't have the, the ports in here. Why? Because they're all scrapped, because they have no lubrication. So, your theories didn't work, but that's okay. It can easily save you. It makes more power. Now that we're going to move the injectors from up here to in here in this block, it's going to go in between the throttle body and the reeds. We're combining the fuel, the oil, and the air all together before it goes through the reeds. So it lubes the crank. See, everybody forgets about the crank, right? But it lubes the crank, it lubes the bearings, it goes through the transfer ports before it hits the spark plug. Everything fires together. So when it fires, when it starts, and there's pressure on things, it has lubrication just like a carburetor bike. So this is going to save you a fortune in parts that don't wear out. And a lot of people now, what they're doing is they're getting these from us because they found, they've realized that and the only way they can get back up and get going is to get a cylinder from a carburetor bike and then use this to relocate the ejectors. You're back up and going. You go, man, the bike runs better everywhere. And life's good. So anyhow, these are the instruction old videos of how to install this thing. It's easy. If I can do it, you can do it. There's written instructions, but these are some video tips. So, you know, you're obviously you're taking the tank off, the seat off. It's easier to take the pipe off. Um, you'll remove these lower subframe bolts, <coughs> excuse me, on each side. Loosen these top ones. You're going to undo this, uh, this here, this hose clamp right here. It's kind of sticky, the air boot on the, on the throttle body, so you might want to get in here with a screwdriver and kind of help pop it off. Lift the subframe up. Uh, I tie it up with a, with a tie down just so it stays up, or you can tighten these bolts here on the top. That'll hold it up because we are going to pull this assembly back. Uh, now we're just going to take the injector assembly out, which is very easy. We are going to reuse some of these fuel lines. The other one's already off. There's two bolts here, here and here, eight millimeter. So take off, slide your thing back, take this clip off, just pull the whole assembly out. It's already off on both sides. And we're going to take this thing out and set it on the bench. And now we're going to plug these holes. Okay, in the kit you actually get the relocation block itself, but you also get these parts. And these parts are the plugs that go in here where the injectors work. So as it pulls together this o-ring, which is a high temperature o-ring, uh, expands and it's going to push against right the sides of that and seal it off. Now uh, I just use grease on these things but people are worried about everything nowadays so if you want to use a little silicone on it that's cool knock yourself out. This is a little copper silicone kind of gnarly stuff there's just one more layer of protection right there. So slide that dude in and just tighten it down until it stops. Silicon's kind of making it spin. Push your finger down on it to keep it from spinning until it expands enough to catch. And we're good. We'll clean this off. We'll put the other one on the other side. And then we're going to take this assembly here off. Okay, let's keep taking this apart. Let's get this cable out of the way. You know, the more you look at this stuff, the more you can understand why this is such a stupid, stupid design. Stupid? Did I mention stupid? It was done this way to pass emissions in Europe. We don't live in Europe. So everybody pays the price. They think if it starts on, a, on a fuel, then the emissions are better. Oil is now dumbed down to 80 to 1 instead of 60 to 1, which, same motors, the carburetor bikes, so what, who's right, right? The carburetor bikes are right. You can't run on that little of oil. Why do you think that you can't buy these cylinders and you can buy carbureted cylinders? I mean, that's part of the reason. You need that lube. You can't even imagine the cost of cranks in these things. But the more you get into it, here's your oil pump. You can see where it goes into through an extremely small hole down here in the throttle body. So this thing has to, to pump in its small minute amount. The bike starts on fuel, so now this oil drops into here, it's only relying on vacuum to pull it into the engine in the first place, but oil's tenacious, which means it's sticky, which means it sticks to the backside of the reeds, 
and it's only air. See, the, the fuel helps kind of dissolve the oil so it moves easier, right? It's thinner or more diluted. Now, with this thick oil stuck on the back of the reeds, you know, it takes a while. You can see why it takes a while for that stuff to start getting through the whole system and into the top end. So when you start doing these kind of things like I do, it's really apparent why this is so important to do. Uh, past that rant, if you want to take this, this is your TPS, throttle position sensor. If you want to disconnect this so it's easier to move the throttle body out of the way, there's a clip on the back side here, and it's kind of hard to do with your fingernail. It's nothing you squeeze, you're going to pull it back. It's this clip right here. So you need to pull this thing back. I use a small screwdriver to let it come off because that one can be a little frustrating. Now, we're just going to loosen this clamp up, pull this deal out. You can work around. If you don't want to take this oil injection line off, that's fine. If you do, absolutely no problem. Where's it going to go? You just pull off this throttle body. You can put a small screwdriver in this hole so oil doesn't possibly run out and you end up with like a little bit of an air gap, but honestly, where the heck is it going to go? Anyhow, and you know, if this kind of stuff did happen and there was a, a glitch in the oil system, that's why I'm so pro, you know, mixing an ounce of oil into the fuel because you still have lubrication in here the whole time. Now, if you didn't want to do this kind of stuff, no problem, at least mix an ounce of oil in the fuel for some ass coverage. But some people think that that's gonna mess with the injectors. They are wrong. Um, and obviously, uh, their theories that it doesn't cause issues are wrong. Because look at all the damage this stuff is incurring. But uh, either way, if you're afraid that that's gonna be an issue, then you can go this route. Then you don't have to add oil into the fuel and it can run, the injectors can run on pure fuel because now it's all going to mix together here. So now I'm going to take out these four bolts, pull this assembly out, and we'll take the reed assembly part and we'll put it on the, uh, the block. Okay, there's an O-ring in here that sealed this part to, to here. Uh, it's not 100% detrimental, but since we went out of the way to machine this ring for it, I would switch it over. So you're just going to pick it out. Something kind of kind of sharp. Maybe I shouldn't use an exacto knife. This isn't. There we go. Don't really want to garf it up. Or what would be the point of it, right? So, plunk it in there. Well, it's a good fit. Somebody knew what they were doing. They machined this stuff. It doesn't matter which way this goes on. And you should also know, we actually have better reeds for these. These things are still the junk reeds that always broke on the carburetor bikes. They like to snap off. And when they snap off, the bikes don't run very well. So we have much better reeds for these as well. But for the sake of argument, we're just going to show you how this goes together. Turn around, the screws drop in there. Everything's kind of lined up. We'll tighten all the screws back down. This thing, uh, it's it's what you'd call unisex. You can turn it either way and it gets the job done. Uh -huh. That's my wrench bottom mount on there, so I gotta get something longer to get in there to get that thing snug. Then we'll put our injectors in. Okay, now injectors in the block. You can see this. Fits real nice, perfect match on the inside. It's pretty clever. So to pull these injectors out, they have these silly little lock blocks on them, which, honest, again, what the point? Redundancy and stupidness. Probably some lawyer. Where is it gonna go? The injector's bolted in the cylinder. This is bolted to the cylinder, and the injector's not gonna go down. But, what do I know? Actually, I know exactly what it's for. There is no left side or right side injector. It does not matter. I think it's for assembly on the assembly line so they can build this somewhere and make sure nothing falls apart. They come right out. You lose a little fuel. 
I always grease the things just a little bit. Make sure it's nice. There's a seal on the top. It's a little dust seal. Doesn't matter whether it's there or not. Because your ceiling is here at the O-ring. So for some reason you lost it. No big deal. I do both sides. I wouldn't try to get a lot of grease in there. In that side, but it's okay. It would just start a little rough until the grease got dissolved out from the fuel. This is going to go this way. And the clips go to the back. to stagger these things so you get one at a time. There we go. Now you see how these dust seals kind of squeeze down? I mean, they're not getting any dust in there. It doesn't matter whether you leave them or not. Let's pull this thing up. And you'll really get the gist of how it works. I should tell you a joke. This is a two stroke. This is serious stuff. So there you go. And they're going to clip on there. You can see the injectors are right there. Right, right close to the spraying in. They're going to meet the oil back here on the side in the air. Everything's going to mix in here, carry together in one shot. It's going to provide better fueling, better power throughout. It does not matter what time the injectors squirt. People think the injector squirt's going to be off and it's going to run weird. That does not matter. It's like a goulash. Sometimes it doesn't matter what goes in first. All that matters is the air fuel ratio is better when you're running on the dyno and the power's gone up. So, right, whatever we've got now is better than stock. And we are looking good. It went together very easy. Um, all we have to do now is join this our fuel line to the fuel spigot, incoming fuel spigot, to the top of the fuel rail on the back side of this hose. And to do that, we're going to steal this longer piece of hose out of our, our fuel hose assembly. If you reuse the stock quick disconnect, you'll need to take it out of here, which will obviously plug into here. Um, but you'll still want to use this longer piece of line to make the junction. If you choose, <coughs> excuse me, if you choose to use our uh, better quick disconnect fuel filter, which has a much, much better filtering capacity than this, the stock one, because you can see how small the stock one is here, right? How demure it is where it fits in the, the hole here. And that's why they give you 10 of these things because they plug up all the time. And then you can tell <laughs> what the filtering area difference is, can't you? This is six times bigger. Either way you go though, um, while you're in there, you know, you might want to do this. You also might want to do our higher flow 90 degree fuel fitting because they have bigger hole sizes in there for the transfers so it, the bike doesn't lean out um, when it's wide open for more than a few seconds. This one uh, just can't flow enough to, to keep up. If you're just tooling around, it's no big deal. But if you're going to be pinned for any kind of time, this is a good idea. Uh, and then to get these, these hoses off, you just squeeze this little area right here where they come together with your side snips, squeeze them and they pop up and they come apart like, like this thing here. And then twist it, steal the hoses and let's put this thing together. One thing I did do uh, is the junction here between this intake manifold and the, and the block. I didn't use the gasket in there. I just went ahead and used the the silicone that I used and uh, that just shortened up the intake track just a tad more so it's closer to the stock overall length. 
this bigger block adds a little length, but we did take out the reed block. So we've only added about, you know, a quarter of inch, a quarter inch to this thing, but taking that gasket out, took another millimeter out of it. So that's just something I personally do. You can do whatever. And that's it. Let's button this thing up, put this line together, start this up, and check our idle RPM. I know what you're thinking, why do I care what the thing idles at? You know, I knew it had idled up before in the 1400 range. That just was showing you that it, it idles about 100 RPMs higher than stock just by doing that, not touching the screw, which is really good because they idle extremely low. And that's not good in some of those tighter technical situations. You want the idle up there just a little bit more. And a lot of times it's just to help avoid stalling and flame outs. And for once it finally responds to that idle adjustment screw because before it was just that just changes air right but the fuel is way up here now that everything's mixing together you're increasing air but it's picking up more fuel through the injector block moving it all together as one right and it's atomizing together for once it actually responds to that and that screw is actually working as far as raising and lowering the rpms so there's zero downside to this absolutely none and they should have been done that way from the factory. I know why they weren't, but they should have been done that way, at least for us in the USA. Anyhow, that's it. Get yourself one, get happy, and save yourself a fortune in rebuilding costs.